patience that you hadn't had before. Did you talk to Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Is he back there? No, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's something, you know, through time and experience, playing at this level, as good as these, all these players are, I think you just, you know, you experience the game and you experience different pitchers, and I think you grow a confidence about hitting with two strikes. And, uh, you know, obviously it's something I need to work on more, but... You know, now with the big man hitting up there with me, I think it's going to be a little easier. See a few more pitches this way. Uh, I hope so. Two of you are... Hopefully I don't miss them. <laughs> Two, well, you, how are you going to cut down on that? How, how, is there a way to do it? And, and you mentioned Jim strikes out as well. The, the 14 strikeouts separated you and him uh, this season. Really? Yes, that's correct. So I'm not going to say the totals, but 14 yeah. 14 strikeouts and 20 homers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. I think you just... I think as time goes on, I'll get more patient with that, and I think I'll, I'll be more selective. And I, Again, I mean, having him in the lineup is going to help me a, a huge bit. We mentioned last season was a breakout season for you, and two of those great moments were walk-off home runs that you had. We get to watch TV now for yeah. a little bit? Oh, yeah, we get to, we get to watch TV. We're going to get to watch more of you. Uh, take a look at this. I'm feeling pretty confident. <laughs> is, there a, is there a batting cage in here? I can take a couple rips. <laughs> your, your manager really needs to bring himself out more. He doesn't get too excited. Yeah, he <laughs> has a problem with that. <laughs> as, as speaking of that, what, what's, what's that going to be like this season? Larry managing this, this really new group of guys, and you've you got several new faces in the lineup. Well, I th I, you know, I, I think he's finally, you know, when he came over and, and took this team over, I mean, he's, every year we've, you know, we've gotten better and better, and, I think now he's at the point where, you know, we have a chance to really win this thing and compete. And uh, I'm sure he's over there doing cartwheels right now. One of the things that you've um, always preached, because everybody's come to you saying, you're, this is your team, are you going to be the leader of the team? And, and you and, and I think Jimmy Rollins have really slowly taken over this team as, as your team. What is the leadership role that you play on this team? You know, I've always kind of felt you don't, you don't take a guy and say you're the leader of our team. I think a... I think your team develops. I think it, over time, you, certain personalities, certain guys, they take over the team. And with the, guy, the kind of group we have, I think we have a good group of guys. And everyone's out here to do the same thing. We're all here to win. And I don't think there, there needs to be a, a stand-up, point-finger type guy. I think we have a, a collective you know, group here that we're all here to win and have a good time. So yeah, I just, I just can't wait to start playing. As, as good a year as you had last season, 37 home runs, 116 runs batted in, 282 batting average, breakout year for you. How much more do you want to bring to the plate this year? How much more I, can you better this, that? This came from Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you think Larry's a conspirator He's behind everything? He's got the goal sheet back there. He's <laughs> tallying things down. I, I mean, obviously, I have, I have a lot of areas I'd like to improve on. Um, you know, again, the strikeouts are, are, are pretty high, and... Um, you know, but more, you know, just being more consistent, I think, is the goal for every, every player, you know, to, when, the, when the time comes up in the end of the game, when, you're on, when, when it's on the line, I think, you know, you, you want to be there to, 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 you know, to produce. And, uh, you know, that's my goal is to be in the thick of things when it counts and get going. Anything better than that feeling, though, the walkout off home run? No, can we watch that again? <laughs> <laughs> we'll replay that for you. Matt Yalof's upstairs with some Phillies fans. Matt, he's downstairs. I'm right over here. There you are. Hey, hey. how you doing? <laughs> we, got, uh, we got a question from uh, Fred from Hamilton, New Jersey. A question for Pat Burrell. Hi, Pat. How are you, uh, Fred? <laughs> no two Phillies have ever hit 90 home runs in one season. Could this be the year? Good question. I hope, I hope you mean combined. <laughs> <laughs> combined. <laughs> how about 100? <laughs> A hundred between you and Tommy. If we do a hundred, you're going to have to make me a bet. <laughs> okay. I want to see some. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. David from Lafayette Hill has a question for Pat Burrell. How does it feel to have Jim in the lineup behind you or in front of you? So if 
one of you guys like mess up that he can like <laughs> help you out. Not that he won't mess up. I guess I'll I'll be the guy that messes up. But <laughs> was he talking to Larry? <laughs> he was looking at me. <laughs> well, hopefully that won't happen too often, but it's always nice to have like I, I keep saying, a guy like this behind you. Mm. It'll be fun. Do you, ca do you care where you bat? No. Does it matter? Three, four, five? Does, does as long make... as I'm in the lineup. Yeah, yeah I think point. that won't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we can find a spot for You're you. You're pitching and hitting knife. You didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are we being funny? <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. Can't you tell? Uh, talk about what you did last year with the goals and writing down your goals and giving that to Larry and him not looking at it. And will you do that again? You know, next it's year? something I didn't I didn't really want to do. And he kept telling me in spring training, I want you to write down, you know, X X X, what you're gonna do, what you think you're capable of doing. And I I end up doing it. And then, you know, throughout the season, I kept looking back and. What was that number, that you put down? I told him I was gonna hit 280. I was going to hit between 35 and 40 homers and between 110 and 120 RBIs. Did it. <laughs> Did it. Somehow it all worked out that way. Because if it didn't, I don't think I'd be sitting here. Matt's got one more, one more fan. Go ahead, Matt. All right, what's your question for Pat Burrell? Who was the toughest pitcher you ever faced? They're all tough. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, th I have to think now. <laughs> I'll tell you who the toughest one is, is for me, is, and it shouldn't be that tough, but Tom Glavin, I, for some reason, he, I don't, <laughs> I'm not alone. You guys must have faced him too. Uh, he's got a different uniform on, but I have to see him again this year. Do you dislike him more now because he didn't want to come play with the Phillies? I have a thing with the Mets. <laughs> I'm actually... You're looking forward to that, aren't I'll you? I'll be all right. He yeah. does pretty well against the Mets for anybody who hasn't kept track. You have, uh, you've truly embraced media attention, fan attention has been lavished upon you. You know, uh, I, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's... Because he really is not that good looking, you know? <laughs> Does anyone think he's a good-looking guy? I mean, so you got that going for you. I wasn't very nice. loud. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You want the guys going, too? <laughs> I don't judge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt, thank you so much. We're thank you great. for having Everybody's me. Everybody's glad to see you here. Thanks for coming in from Let's Arizona. And we'll see you in Clearwater. Thank you. Happy Stay right there. We're gonna, we have to disconnect you. We're going to take a quick break. Coming up, Jim Tomey's going to be with us as we continue Meet the Phillies 2003. When we return, Joe Kerrigan, Phillies pitching coach, will be right here. like to see you at the new ballpark. Buy full or partial season tickets for 2003 and you can lock in season tickets for 2004. Call 215-463-5000. Tuesday night at 7, the Flyers head to the Big Apple to face off against the New York Islanders, followed by Dodge Presents Flyers Post Game Live. Every day is game day on Comcast Sportsnet. Wednesday night at 7.30, it's time for NBA action as the New Jersey Nets tip off at the Sixers, followed by Dodge Presents Sixers Post Game Live. Every day is game day on Comcast Sportsnet. All right, guys, Michael and Leslie, I'm outside. Single digits out here. It's not Clearwater, Florida temperature, but it is good enough to play some baseball with Lee Netwig from Havertown, Pennsylvania. Joins me out here, and it's... Uh, this guy looks like he's got some promise. Maybe Joe Kerrigan could work on him a little bit and get this guy in the rotation 10 years from now. Guys. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. Matt, look at that, Joe. I'm just glad that he didn't turn his head at the wrong time where you really didn't need Matt <laughs> getting right, hit upside sudden, the head with a baseball. Look like Tony C. That would not be, <laughs> would not be good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Meet the Phillies 2003. Would you please welcome Phillies pitching coach Joe Kerrigan. Thank you. Thank you.
You know, Joe, that has a nice ring to it, but yeah. we're a little upset with you that you're leaving us on Phillies Post Game Live, you realize. <laughs> Killing us. How could you do that? Larry calls, you just go running. Well, it's good to be back and have a real job again. I could say that. Oh, nice. I'm sure, I'm oh, sure. that hurts. We're going to take a short break and then. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be equally as uh, forthcoming about everything now that you're the pitching coach as you were when you were an analyst, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. He's hosting, he's going to host post game live from the dugout now. Right, right. Uh, first off, from Philadelphia, Father Judge, Temple University, Tasty Cake Joe, the nickname. Yeah. And uh, tell us how you got that. Because everyone well, from Philadelphia knows. Well, after my freshman year in college in 1972, I went to work in the winter part-time at Tasty Cake. Uh, my brothers had worked there for many years, and, and they got me a job there, stocking the backs, boxes on the pallets as they come off the conveyor belt. And I used to do that uh, after school and at night and on weekends. And basically, that's where it started. Tasty Cake Joe, uh, that's better than like Lavoris Joe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tasty Cake Joe works in Philadelphia. Is, is this something that you've always thought would be a great spot for you because of being from here, the, just the opportunity to work with the Phillies and especially with the way the team's changed recently? Well, over the last few years, I, I've thought about it as you get older and you, your roots become more established here and you, you make your home base here and, and you know you're going to be here for the rest of your life. I, I've kind of thought about it the last two years, what it would be like to come home. Mm -hmm. You know, not to go away every spring and pack for seven months. Because once you go away for the baseball season, you're basically taking half your house and moving it to another city or another state for that whole summer. So it'll be a little strange in that regard when you get down to spring training. You just have to park, uh, pack warm weather clothes and not have to worry about packing your whole wardrobe. you got, you got a real solid rotation to work with. And, and some have said that the pitching coach really is as important, at least for the Phillies, and getting any pitcher. And you got Kevin Millwood, which is a great ac acquisition. But, but what is someone like yourself... How are you going to help these guys? Well, I think we have a real good foundation with our staff with regard to our starters, and that's where you have to, that's what you have to begin with. With guys like Millwood, Wolf, Padilla at the top of the rotation, and then we have a lot of depth with Duckworth and Myers, Mercado, Roa, guy like Eric Young. We think we have a lot of depth, which you have to have in the starting rotation to get through the seasons, these baseball seasons. What about your philosophy? Because I know from working with you for the past year, you're very prepared. You're very statistically oriented. How do you come in and approach these guys? And, and it is, is it easier for you to have maybe a younger pitcher than somebody who's already set in their ways because of the fact that you're bringing so much information to them? Well, I want, one thing is to try to make the program simple. Uh, any plan that you try to give these pitchers and the kitchen catchers, you want to make it based on common sense or logic, and you want to make it simple for them. Maybe feed them a little more each month, but basically let's get the foundation in place, what our philosophy is, and let's commit to the plan. What we talk about, what we practice on, let's do it during the games. We're talking about the pitchers, but we, we had spoken just after you got the job, and, and you said Mike Lieberthal and you kind of on the same wavelength, yeah. which is, is as important as, as the pitchers and you, right? It sure is. You have to get your catchers to carry out your plan. Because a lot of times what your catcher is, he's an assistant coach or assistant manager on the field. And it's most important that he gets the pitchers to believe in that plan. Mm. What's the team's biggest strength on the pitching staff coming back this year? I, I think it'll be the possibility of our starters and what we can have in our starting rotation. And the ability to go out there every day and get us into the seventh or eighth inning. And I think we have three guys that are capable as Larry Boa said the other day, of pitching 200-plus innings. Guys like Millwood, Wolf, Padilla all have the capability of putting 600 innings together between the three of them, and that's a real good start. Everyone initially wanted Tom Glavin so badly in this town. The Mets got him, and then Kevin Millwood might yeah. even be a better pickup than, than Tom Glavin. What are your thoughts on Millwood as the ace of the staff? He's not been an ace, ace of the staff before. That's a good point. Millwood was one of the better, if not the best, pitchers in the second half last year. I believe his record was 12-3. and three. He got better as the season went on. He's a guy that you can project as a number one starter. It doesn't bother him. The pressure of being a number one starter doesn't f bother him. And I think he's a pitcher that the young people will be able to follow his example. Well, that's what I was wondering because I know Tom Glavin talked about afterwards how he thought he fit better with the Mets because there were more people that were his his age group, people that he fit in with and blended with as opposed to being the guy that they would lean on. Does Kevin Mill Millwood strike you as the kind of guy that wants to help the younger guys and wants to share his knowledge? Yeah, Millwood's sort of a quiet, soft-spoken guy, and we've already had a couple sessions with Millwood and with our young pitchers, and he's been there 
picking their brains a little bit, backing up our philosophy or what we're trying to introduce delivery-wise into some of our young pitchers. So he's been a real good support system for us already. Matt Yalov standing by with some fans now. They've got some questions for Joe Kay. Matt? Yeah, I'm going to let uh, the fans ask the questions. I asked enough of Joe Kay last year. Let the, <laughs> let the fans do the talking. Your, you're losing your partner, Matt. <laughs> Apparently. Charlie from Bryn Mawr has a question. Um, I was wondering who do you think are the, going to be the five people in the starting rotation? That's a good question. That's what we I love it when ask. they ask those yeah, questions. That's a good question. <laughs> See, it makes it easier for us. We don't have to ask. That's right. We didn't ask. Did you put them up to that matter? <laughs> Here's five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, well, like I said, any time you go to spring training, you try to get seven or eight pitchers ready. Now, we basically know that the top three guys are probably going to be Millwood, Wolf, and Padilla. And then what we'd like to do is have a competition for those final two spots amongst five pitchers. And that's what we'll do. And we know Brett Meyer's future is big with this team. And, they, and um, then there's Duckworth, who struggled in his sophomore season. Are you hopeful that he will come back and, and recover from the woes that he had last year? I think so. With Duckworth, I think it's a matter of keeping things real simple for him. In other words, first pitch strikes. He had a poor average last year as first pitch strikes, and that's where we'll start with him is something as simple as, hey, that's throw strike, first pitch. You said, you said the remainder of the pitchers for the final two spots. That, uh, that's Brett Myers, Brandon Duckworth, who? Hector Mercado? Who? Joe Roa, Hector Mercado, and Yerrick Young. Okay. Eric Young. They'll, they will be vying for the final yes. two spots in the rotation. Matt Yaloff with another fan. Matt. All right, Michael, we have Scott from Bryn Mawr. Scott has a question for Joe Kerrigan. Hi. Uh, which Phillies pitcher are you the most excited to work with? Oh, that's another good question. Uh, so far, the guys that we've brought in and had mini camps where they've thrown a couple bullpens and practice sessions for us, you have to be excited about Myers. Brett Myers has a great arm. Have to be excited about Millwood because Millwood really knows how to pitch. And Randy Wolf, a guy like Randy Wolf Padilla, I could almost go down the whole staff that I'm looking forward to working with. All right, Joe, thanks for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, it. Joe Kerrigan, the Phillies' new Thank pitching you. coach, Thank one you. of our own. We've got to take a break. When we come back, Jim Tomey's in the house, everyone. We'll be back in just a moment. Be there for the three-pointers, the in-your-face dunks, and the spectacular buzzer beaters. ESPN Full Court is maximum college basketball with more than 450 games from the nation's top conferences, including coverage of the NCAA Women's Tournament. Nobody captures the game like ESPN. Will you be there? Call now to order. Call 1-800-RING-RCN now and get a half season of ESPN Full Court. Catch all the action from January 11th to March 25th for only $49. You know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't interested. I'll leave it at that. It gives me uh, extreme pleasure to introduce the newest member of the Philadelphia Phillies first baseman, Jim Tomey. Pat Burrell's really upset right now. <laughs> and two, no pressure. There's no pressure. No big deal. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Got a chance to meet my teammates last night. And, you know, this is, I mean, the warming here has been great, you know. And uh, we're really looking forward to, 
to, to getting here. I know my wife was in town last week looking for a home, and, you know, this, this is going to be a special, uh, I think it's going to be a great marriage. I really do. I yeah. really do. And since we saw you last, there's a new addition to the Tomy family. Yes, yes, you, we have a daughter. We, we <laughs> have, uh, we just, we, my wife gave birth to our daughter, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it really, truly, it truly is one of the greatest gifts of life. You know, being a baseball player and being uh, blessed, I think we're all fortunate to, to play the game of baseball, but when you, uh, when you, have a family. I told Pat, I said, I got to get him going and get him a family here. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think Pat's in any rush. <laughs> I don't think, he, he's, he's not in the family way <laughs> right now. <laughs> but, you know, the, it, what's great, you know, for me is I played a long time in Cleveland, got a lot of special people there. And, and last night meeting these guys and, you know, baseball's very unique in that sense that you know, we, we all have the same thoughts. We all kind of think the same. And, and once again, like I said, I'm very happy to be here. And, uh, you know, it's going to be great. Let's win a world championship. <laughs> well, those are the magic words right there. Jim, you had a special relationship with the fans in Cleveland. How important is it for you to develop that same kind of relationship with the fans here in Philadelphia? Well, I mean, as a player, you know, that's, that's I think, as a, as a player, as a role model, you have, to, you have to give back. You have to communicate with your fans. You know what I mean? You have to, you know, I think that I think the what, one thing that the Phillies do really well is they, they do a lot of public things. They do a lot of uh, charity work. And that's important, you know, the fans have to feel that their players are involved. And, you know, and that was for me, that was also a big thing on signing here because, you know, of the community work that also goes in it. Yeah, I, kn I know you were very impressed when, when Ed Wade brought you in. You took the tour and, and the Carpenters Union uh, gave you a standing O outside the new ballpark site. And, and you stopped the, stopped the car, you got out. And, and tell us how much that impressed you. Well, the electricians, I mean, for me, that was very heartwarming and... You know, I mean, they're blue collar. My dad, w I grew up in Illinois, and my dad was blue collar, and, you know, that was very, for me, that, that meant a lot. I think the big thing for me also coming here was that Boa told me he was going to stretch me during the year, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm still going to let him do that. He, he, he's not going to uh, back out on that one. How, what kind of conversations have you had with Pat Burrell and, and what you guys will be able to do in this Phillies lineup? Well, we're, you know, I think for him and I, we're very similar hitters. One's right-handed, one's left-handed, but, you know, we, we both hit for power. Uh, you know, for me, I think watching Pat and watching him grow as a hitter, you know, I'm looking real forward to learning, but also helping him out maybe in some of the things that I've done in the past. And, uh, you know, and on t I mean, just not Pat. There's other guys, I think, on down through the uh, through our lineup that we can all feed off of each other and uh, you know and, and help each other out as we go speaking of the lineup you were second in home runs in the majors last year second in slugging percentage fourth and on base percentage ninth in RBIs fourth in walks and we'll ask Larry but what's your preference in terms of you batted cleanup last year in 128 I, games you know Four. for me I told I told Larry I said look you know uh oh have you met uh -oh. this guy yet Oh, no. Fanatic. <laughs> the Philly. <laughs> That's I think he's glad you're here. Yeah. He likes you, Jim. Uh, he's, got, he's got a present for all oh, Philadelphia oh, pretzel. Philly <laughs> Philadelphia. He's got more, Jim. He's got a fanatic uh, doll. Your Lala. daughter will love it. And tasty cakes. cakes. <laughs> oh, wait. But wait, there's more. Oh my goodness, it's a cheese steak! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Fanatic, are you done, Fanatic? Fanatic, we got it. Oh, oh. And, oh, and Fanatic's plugging his book. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the Fanatic's plugging it. <laughs> Here's Belly's about a big kiss from the Fanatic. Thank you, Fanatic. Thank you. Oh, oh, too much. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, you didn't have to go far to get lunch, did yeah. you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leslie and I will talk while you finish. And... 
And Man. your daughter will like the doll. You can That's always right. take that home and then read her the bedtime story. She better not cry, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> when that occurred, that back to where you might might be hitting in the lineup. Your 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 preference. You, you know, you it really does it. not matter to me. I've hit I've hit third. I've hit fourth. I've hit fifth. It all. You know, I mean, like I said to Bo, I, you know, that's, as a manager, that's his job to figure that out, you know, and, uh, you know, there's going to be times where, you know, one guy might be hotter than the other, and, you know, you move the lineup around, but ultimately, you know, the, 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 the main thing is, is to win games, and, and for me, I, it doesn't matter wherever, uh, I'll hit wherever, just put me in that lineup, and we'll see. Yeah. How about the transition to the National League? It's going to be different, you know, obviously playing a lot of years in the American League, you know, I mean, it, it, for me, I'm going to have to learn new pitchers, you know, just because I've never, I've never faced them on a consistent basis. So, you know, I think through obviously good scouting, through good video, which I've already scouted and watched a lot of video on some guys, you know, you, the game of baseball, you just play it, you know, and, and Hopefully you'll adjust from there and go on. Is there trepidation after playing your entire career with one team, with Cleveland, a, a place where your wife's from, where, where you you know you grew up one state over? What what was your you got butterflies going into this season or? Um, well, yeah, I mean you know, I, in life anything new, a new environment, you know, is 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 exciting, but it's also, you know, it's a new experience for me. I, I'm a new kid on the block, really. I, I'm, you know, but looking back, I mean, I I. I, I enjoyed Cleveland. I, I really did. But but the reason and the big reason why I signed in Philly was because I I truly believe that that the way that Ed and and Mr. Montgomery all those guys are, are are putting this club together that we have a chance to win. And ultimately, as a player, And ultimately, as a player, you know, that's why you play the game. You play the game to win. And, you know, and getting back, I mean, I'm looking forward to being here. And we're going to have a ton of fun. You yeah. know what? That's what it's all about. That's the right answer. The fans got an opportunity for those of them who saw the press conference that we carried live on uh, Comcast Sportsnet. Uh, there was an emotional side of you that the fans saw. I think that they felt they got a more personal view of Jim Tomey. And, you may not want to see it, but I think everybody else wants to see the personal side of Jim Tomey. It's obviously very important to you. How difficult was it expecting a child to pull yourself away and take your wife away from what you've known as home? But that, and where did that play into it? Well, I always say my rock, excuse me. My wife is my rock. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to bring our man back to answer some please baseball questions. <laughs> I hate when my allergies kick in like that. <laughs> you You'd think I'd have hormones like my wife during the pregnancy. <laughs> Matt Yaloff always makes people cry. Don't yeah, worry exactly. about it. Exactly. <laughs> Happens all the time. But I think that's one of the things that instantly endeared you to the fandom here and to the people of Philadelphia is that you're perceived as a tough guy, but yet you've got that soft side. You're a sensitive guy, too. <laughs> huh? You know, I mean... I feel like we're on Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> I better... <laughs> Hey, you know, Dr. Phil's on his way out in a moment. Exactly. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, my wife, you know, and, and having a baby put when you when you have a child, it puts a whole nother perspective on your life. And, uh, you know, and getting back, I I'm very fortunate. I think, you know, my wife is is truly I mean, when I said she's my rock, I think, you know, as a marriage, you you go through that and you. You know, the, the, the pleasure of having somebody there that, that understands your side. And, and that's where that all came from. Home run totals for you have increased each of the last five seasons. You had 30 in 1998, all the way to 52 last year, which was second in the majors. How has that happened? And can you expect that to continue? 
you know, all the way to 60 or 70. So, <laughs> well, you know, 90 you know home, home runs are real, real weird because you can't go in with the mind frame you're going to hit home runs. Uh, for me, you know, I think what really helped me hit 50 home runs last year was that I hit 300. And, you know, being a, a power hitter, if you can, you know, I cut my strikeouts back, I think, 40 or 50 last year from where I was normally at. So I think that putting the ball in play, you know, a little more than I did in the past really helped and, and bringing my average up. But mm. home runs, you know what, you're going to hit as many home runs as you're, you know, as you do. You can't go in and say, you know, I want to hit 50, I want to hit 40. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Matt Yaloff is off to our right here with another fan. Matt? Yeah, Josh from Huntington Valley has a question that uh, the folks in the media don't want to ask. So, Josh, you go ahead. What are you going to do to prevent striking out as much? Oh, no. Well, Come on, Josh. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, you know, for me, though, you know, each player is different. You know, for me, that's part of my game. So I understand that, you know, if, if, if I strike out also, my on-base percentage and my walks have to be there because you have to even that out, you know. And I, I think the one thing you try to do is just work hard to improve on it. And that's, you know, as a player, we all, we all have weaknesses to work on, but that's, that's just one of mine. And real quick, you talked about your support staff, and I know you had a big support staff in Cleveland. One of those men is now with the Phillies organization, Charlie Manuel, your former manager, now a special assistant to Ed Wade. What does that mean to you to have him with the Phillies, and what sort of influence did he have on you? Well, I think Charlie's a good baseball man. Obviously, Ed, Ed and uh, Ruben and the guys in the front office, they really thought, they really thought a lot of Charlie and, <clears throat> and vice versa. I think, you know, the one thing Charlie uh, coming in here, you know, he, he's a good baseball man and, and he'll listen too. Thank you so much, Jim, for being here. I Thanks, know the fans guys. are very excited to have you here. Jim Tomey, everyone. Jim Tomey coming to a ballpark near you. We're going to take a timeout. We come back and we will meet Larry Boa and Ed Wade to help put this team together as we continue Meet the Phillies 2003 from the King of Crush Em All. quite like a visit to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Here for a change, you'll be overwhelmed by something other than your job. Call today for your free travel guide, the Outer Banks, home of the first flight. The best time you'll ever have, the fondest memories you'll ever make, the most unforgettable things you'll ever experience, are simply a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Presenting the 100th anniversary celebration of the first flight at the home of the first flight. Call today for your free Outer Banks travel guide and relive the excitement in the air. Welcome back to Meet the Phillies 2003. We're at the King of Prussia Mall, and one of the highlights every year of Meet the Phillies is the autograph session. The autograph session taking place here, and once again with the Phillies this offseason, bigger is better, and it doesn't get much bigger than these two gentlemen in terms of size and stature. Jim Tomey and Pat Burrell signing autographs for folks here at the King of Prussia Mall. Some of these people waited on a line roughly a quarter mile long to meet and greet two of the brightest stars in all of the game. Forget about just the National League, in all of baseball. And if you're at the mall and you see lines, you think holiday shopping. But no, this is Meet the Phillies 2003. Let's go back down to the Lord and Taylor Court with Michael and Leslie. And we welcome you back to the Lord and Taylor Court here at the King of Prussia Mall. We are continuing Meet the Phillies 2003. And let me introduce to you right now the architect of this edition, Ed Way, general manager. Thank you. And the 2001 manager of the year, Larry Boa. Eddie, you've been doing this for a while. Larry, you've been here on the, on the winter tour. Uh, what's this like? This is amazing. And we've got more folks waiting to sign autographs with you. It's exceptional. Uh, we've always had a good turnout here at King of Prussia Mall, but uh, from what I understand, people began to line up at 6 o'clock this morning. And 
I think it's sort of indicative of the energy in the city. Obviously, everybody's excited about the Eagles, but uh, to have people talking about Phillies baseball in January is very exciting for us. Larry, mm -hmm. having been here as a player and now being back as a manager, can you recall any time where there was this much excitement around the Phillies? Obviously, uh, there was a uh, World Series that right. probably generated mm -hmm. a little bit of excitement, but can you recall a time since then? I think I think bef before that, that World Series, the, the year we got Pete Rose, there was a lot of excitement. In the 79. Series. Right. And... Uh, with Tommy and Bell and uh, and Millwood, uh, obviously not only are the people excited in the city, but I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to getting down there and getting started. Are, are there similar similarities from that time? Uh, you know, Pete was supposedly the final cog in the wheel of a team that had been contenders for the, for years before. This team's not like that, but you got Jim right. Tommy coming in, and that's a big presence. Right, it is a huge presence. But you know, and, and let's not forget the. The Bells and, and the Millwoods. I mean, I've already seen Millwood for two days talking with Randy Wolf, and I know they're talking about pitching. Uh, here's a guy that's been around Glavin and Maddox. So you know he's going to help a guy like Randy Wolf. He's going to help Brett Meyer. So that's sort of the wheels are sort of in motion. For, forget about what they're going to do. We all know they're going to be good baseball players, but they're also doing other things uh, with Tommy and Burrow bonding now and talking about baseball. Jimmy Rollins last night was talking with Tommy. So they're all they're all getting involved in their own way and uh, as I said when we first signed these guys not only are they great players but they're great guys they have in the clubhouse and the community a question for both of you this the character of this team has changed a little bit in the sense that they're guys you knew guys that you wanted to bring in and and you made that happen how much has this become a team that is a Larry Boa style team over the course of the last few uh, years I think pe people have talked about that that wasn't the design I, I, I think Larry's looking for players who want to win and and that's that should be every player in the universe, but there are certain types of personalities that uh, I think connect with, with an entire team, not just with the manager, the coaching staff, but with their teammates. And in the case of the players who we went out and got this year, I think they really connected with our community, which was also important because, you know, that's what we're here for is to, uh, to try and put a championship caliber club on the field for our players. At the same time, as Larry was answering the last question, I thought about the, you know, all these days where I'd walk into his office and Burl would be in there and, and Jimmy would walk, Jimmy Rollins would walk in. I've got a feeling now I'll walk into the clubhouse and there'll be like 18 guys in Bo's office because they'll be having this conversation about, you know, nonstop baseball. I know one of the key, I thought one of the key elements of our, uh, uh, of our re uh, quest to try to sign Jim was the ability for he and, and Larry to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting in Bo's office on one of the days that he was there. And I walked in because we had to go someplace else and they're into pitchers' tendencies and stuff like that. And I said, these guys who really never talked very much to each other before have really connected and, and, and you can see that yeah it is a Larry Boa kind of guy but he's I think he's a Philly guy at this point. You, you know the, the other thing I was, I was to add to that uh, in, in, in Tommy and Bell and, and Tyler Houston those are all free agents they picked Philadelphia to play they want to be here so that, that's very important it's, it's nice to have players that want to be here and those three guys Pick the Philadelphia Phillies. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that was the, and I, and I do believe that, you know, some of the stuff we, I think we orchestrated fairly well, the standing ovation at the Flyers game was <laughs> something that we expected <laughs> to happen when, when Jim was there, but we didn't expect the electricians local to show up outside, and that meant a lot, and, and, and I th just think that while these guys were in town for a couple of days, they sensed that they may not have known a lot about us as a baseball town, but they sensed that the energy was there that the baseball fans are there, that people are dying to see a championship caliber club and they want to be part of it. Aside from knowing something about their teammates and the manager and the staff and the organization, I think they felt the energy of our fans and, and you know, this is indicative of what I think they're going to experience for the whole time that they're here. You, you've been well liked and well respected for, the, for most of your ten, tenure here, but you had a tough time last year and, and we're, we're put upon a little bit and I think you are owed a tremendous debt of gratitude and thanks from, from all of us for going out and signing these guys and putting this addition together. Together, really, and Wade. Well, I, I think a, I think a big part of what we did, um, I, I, obviously, I believe it's an organizational effort, and I, and I think it really it, it really began when we sat down in, in '96 and '97 and made the the commitment to the to scouting and player development to try to go ahead and and make sure that our core nucleus were the young players. And I know we had some rough spots along the way, and it's it's not fun to have to trade good players away as 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 we had to. Uh, a couple of times in this process but you know the commitment that the organization made the commitment that, that that our ownership group made Dave Montgomery made and and everybody who got involved in this process we 
we believe that given the opportunity, we could make smart baseball decisions. And fortunately, a year away from being in the new ballpark, which is going to be a, a great addition to, uh, to our entire community, gave us the ability to be a little bit more flexible on payroll and then use that opportunity to go out and, and really convince these guys that this is the right place for them to play. That's, that's what I wanted to follow up. Leslie and I were talking beforehand. We wanted to ask you about the economics of baseball. Everyone wants to know, where'd they get the money now? You well, know, it's not now. That's the thing. <laughs> we, we've, we've been honest every step of the way here talking about our lease at Veterans Stadium and, and uh, the inflexibility that it created. And we were also honest saying that when we get into the new ballpark, uh, we believe that our revenues are going to be commensurate with the size of our marketplace. And when that happens, so will our, will our, pay, our player payroll will reflect those revenues. What we've done this year is we said, okay, we, we understand, we think we've got an understanding of what the economic environment is going to be in 04. Let's use some of those resources a year early because we think we're close and try and really, instead of just taking a huge jump in payroll, let's try and bridge to that point by being aggressive this offseason take advantage of the fact that you've got a Jim Tome and a David Bell on the market. You've got circumstances where there are a lot of teams because what they've done in the past are unable to compete economically in this, in this marketplace. And let's take a run at it. So those are the elements that came into play. We've got the young club that looks like it's ready to take the next step. We've got the ballpark a year away. Let's mold these two elements together and get aggressive. And fortunately, uh, at this point, we think we're ready to go come, uh, come March 31st. Okay, time for the tough questions. Matt Yalop has a fan who'd like <laughs> to ask you one. I have nothing to do with this. Larry Boa, question from Zach from Philadelphia. Um, how did you feel when you acquired Jim Tomey and David Bell? That's a good question. I was, it, it, Christmas came real early for me. Uh, you know, the thing about that plan is the, uh, after the season ended, Zach, uh, we, we put some names on a piece of paper and Tommy and Bell were at the top of that list. And obviously, as a manager, you think, well, if we can get one out of the two, that would be great. But to get them both was unbelievable. You know, the Phillies were the most talked about team in baseball from the national media in this offseason, and especially at a time when the delicate nature of the economics of baseball and the Phillies are out there spending. You took some criticism, strangely enough, from some people who said, what are you going out there and, and bringing the market up higher? But is it nice to actually be in the position where everybody's looking at you guys as the one who yeah, they're and, watching you? And, and I guess I dispute a little bit that we, that we moved this market. Uh, you know, we, when you look at Dave, we looked at David Bell, we looked at comparable players, and, and that's, a, that's a marketplace signing. You know, Jim Tomey in, in other markets two or three years ago uh, probably would have been a substantially higher number than, than what we signed out. Obviously, they're, they're big numbers that we ended up with, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it was a little bit... Uh, but other players waited to see what the Phillies were doing. Initially. Yeah, it was. We, we obviously were one of the few clubs that had maintained enough flexibility because of the approach that we had taken over the last four or five years to be able to be aggressive in this marketplace. So we sort of stood out in the process. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we were in that position. I'd rather be there than, 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 uh, than be saddled with a lot of contracts that were no longer effective, where you had a lot of deferred compensation that you were playing to pl paying to players who don't, weren't with you anymore, which is the position a lot of teams are in. Uh, I would rather be in our position to be able to be aggressive when we were and, and, uh, and uh, to reap the fruits of that effort. One more question with Matt. Matt? Yeah, Zach. Another Zach from Elkins Park has a question for both gentlemen. Uh, what, what, what was your thoughts when Glavin went to the Mets? You want me to go for uh, Again, uh, you know, we were uh, right on the... I like this guy. We were right on the <laughs> cuff there. We didn't know where he was going to go. We knew he wasn't going to Atlanta. And the initial reaction, obviously, uh, there was a little bit of uh, a letdown. But we also understood that we got Bell and Tommy. And then when we didn't get Moyer and Bird... You know, then we said, well, you know, we, we got to try to get another pitcher. As it turned out, the guy we got is probably better than all of them. So we got Millwood. <laughs> Ed Wade and Larry Boa, thank you so much. But don't go anywhere. We're not done with you just yet. We got something new to meet the Phillies this year's edition. It is Quiz Show. We're going to oh. test, yeah. <laughs> test Larry and Ed versus some of the folks here. It ought to be interesting. We'll be, back in be good at this. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment from King of Prussia Plaza. It's Meet the Phillies 2003.
players and soon a brand new ballpark. It's a good season for season tickets. Call now, 215-463-5000. You're losing your hair, and you haven't ordered Avacor yet? Hi, I'm Derek Cope, race car driver and TV analyst. To do your best, you need to look and feel your best. When I started noticing my hair thinning, I decided to take action. I explored various options, and I found the Avacor system. The experts at Avacor told me that hair loss is caused by a body chemical called DHT that stops your hair from growing. Avacor has an all-natural DHT blocker and its topical physician's formulation starts your hair growing again. It worked for me. It's about confidence and the desire to win. Avacor does that. Join the tens of thousands of satisfied customers who have reversed their hair loss with Avacor. It's guaranteed. Call 800-711-4525. Now you can use Avacor risk-free for one full year. It's guaranteed. Call 800-711-4525. That's 800-711-4525. Now it's time for Quiz Show. All right, here's how it's run. Five contestants will have... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Meet the Phillies 2003. We are in the King of Prussia Mall, and we are in the Lord and Taylor Court, and we have got a great crowd out here and many knowledgeable fans, yes, we are quite yes. sure. All right. Matt Yaloff is standing by with the first contestant. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Tell Thanks, them what they want, Matt. <laughs> Tootsie Pop Drops, Michael. Don't call me Johnny, please. <laughs> Patrick O'Connor is our first contestant. He's ready to go. He's, you can see the steam coming off his head. He's thinking so hard. <laughs> Let it go, guys. Okay. Who had the first hit in Veterans Stadium history? Fun, fun, Look at the fun, stage. Fun, 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 Pat, what's fun. up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Larry Bow. Oh. oh! Very nice. You get the big screen TV. No. <laughs> it was a single in the first inning on April 10th against the Expos. Yeah. 1971, by the way. Hard to believe it was a single. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> All right, Matt, question number two. Who you got there? Al Heinley. Al's from Media, Pennsylvania. All right, Al, Delaware County. Al, who holds the Phillies franchise single season save record? Jose Mesa. That would be correct. Bonus points. Yeah. How many saves in what year? 45. Oh, my, yeah. He's been studying the media guy. <laughs> Last season, 45 saves. Okay, congratulations, Al. Next contestant, Leslie. All right, I got Gina here. Gina, is it Luciano? Lucano. Lucano, okay, Gina's here. <laughs> All right, Gina. Of the Phillies with at least 100 at bats last season, who had the highest batting average? Bobby Abreu. Ooh, good yeah. guess. Good guess by you. Okay, Bobby guys. Right. Oh, we have to guess? Yep, you yeah. have to guess. Let's give it to Larry first. He's got a great... <laughs> what, was the, what was the question? Of the Phillies with at least 100 at-bats last season, who had the highest batting average? Cake. Todd Pratt. Oh, yes. And bonus points if you can tell me what his batting average was. I know it was, he, he was dropping real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say... Uh, I know it's under... I think it was under 305. Uh, 306? Higher, higher, higher. Really? 310? That's right. No. You guys' is 311. 311. <laughs> it's, like, it's about 380 going in. So I'll be there for the arbitration hearing. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the price is right. Higher, 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 higher. Okay, Matt, who's next? Jim Fita is next, Michael, from Folsom, Pennsylvania. All right. Who was the last Philly to hit three home runs in one game? We'll give you a hint. He's still active with the Phillies. Uh, Mike Lieberthal? That nice. is correct. Nice. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you, contestants. I wish we had more time, but we are out of time. And we, uh, we want to thank Larry Boa, Ed Wade. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And for Larry Boa and Ed Wade. Thank you. We'll see you out at the vet. And before we say goodbye, we'd like to give thanks to those who made this event possible. Our gracious hosts here at the King of Prussia Mall, the California Cafe for their wonderful cuisine, to Lord and Taylor for allowing us to share their space. We, they let us block their entrance, so we thank them for that. And radio station 93.3 WMMR and Vinnie DeCarum.
for coming out and having some fun with us. And of course, the Philadelphia Phillies organization. And thanks to all of you. Meet the Phillies 2003 has been brought to you by California Cafe. Late lunch, early dinner, just out for a bite. California Cafe introduces Cafe All Day, a new small plates menu that's quick and tasty and lets you get on your way. It's Cafe All Day. And by Rena Center. At Rena Center, you never need credit to get the best name brands like Sony, Whirlpool, Philips, Dell, and many more. So go to Rena Center today.